Today I'll be showing you how to pair the xlookup function with the indirect function for your more complex data lookup problems in Excel. In my case, I'm looking for, I have three data tables here, first of all, and over here I can choose a department and then I can choose a firm and then based on what I've chosen, it'll return the sales to me. Now, as you can see, all, all of these departments, these are about eight departments and each three of these firms, these companies have these eight departments. The first company being Quantum Spirit and then Stellar Crafter and then Apex Stripe. So these three companies have these eight um, departments and we wanna be able to select a department and then select a company for which we're looking for that department and we wanna be able to return the sales figure. Um, so essentially we need to be able to First of all, find the department and then find which table we're looking at from this one, this one, or this one, and then return the data. So this is going to be a dynamic X lookup for which our lookup array or the lookup range is going to be dependent upon what we select over here. So if we use a simple X lookup, which I'll be showing you in a second, it will not work. And the reason it will not work is that when you use an X lookup, you're linking to a specific range but in this case it has to be dynamic so that's where the indirect function comes in so let me show you the example with the original x lookup problem x lookup and then the lookup value is going to be accounting and we're going to be looking for accounting um, in our lookup array so for example um, let's pick one table let's pick apex strive so we're going to be looking for accounting within this table here. And our return array is going to be, of course, a sales figure. So we can select these sales figures and we can close a bracket. The rest of the values are not pertinent to us for now. We can close a bracket and it returns to us our $13,500. And that's this figure over here. But now what if I wanted to look for accounting for this firm? this table over here or what if I wanted to look for accounting for this firm so how can I make this dynamic well that's where our indirect function comes in so what we're going to do is we're going to keep this as so but we're going to make some changes to it and we're going to add the indirect function but before I do that let me also mention to you that these uh, table names are actually saved as the company name so if I go into, into a table design this is called Stellar Crafter. And it's important to note that these table names are the, th are the same ones that are in our drop-down list over here. So this these are the three table names of these three tables. These names have to be the exact same in order for it, us to be able to do this function. So if this was called table one, for example, then we would need to have table one within our data validation drop-down list as well. And I've shown how to do data validation in my previous videos as well. Um, but essentially, these names need to be the exact same, including the capitalization, the spaces, and everything. Now, that's out of the way. Now, let's go ahead and let's put in the, um, the indirect function into this formula. So as you can see, this is looking at the Apex Drive table. Apex Drive is right over here. Now we wanna make this part dynamic so that instead of looking, looking just at the Apex Drive table, it looks at the Stellar Crafter and the Quantum Sprint tables as well. So we're gonna delete off this part and we're gonna go into in direct, open bracket, and our reference text is gonna be this, whatever table we've chosen from here. We're gonna insert the AND function and in double quotes, we're gonna loop the department name. Now, the same thing for our return array. We're going to take out this um, fixed range, the table name, and we're going to insert an indirect function, open bracket. It's going to be, once again, our selected table and function. And then in double quotes, we're going to, once again, insert our um, sales figure, right? And then we can go ahead and close that bracket and press Enter. And we're just missing some parentheses. So I'm going to go ahead and fix that. And now, as you can see, we've made it dynamic. 
but let's see if it's actually working. So accounting for Apex Drive is right over here, 13486. That's the same one, they're matching, but we've already done this. So let's choose, now let's choose accounting department for Quantum Spirit. So this should give us a value of 45,349. So let's try it out. Let's go into Quantum Spirit, 45,349. Now, what if we choose IT for Quantum Spirit? This should give us 14,728. IT, 14,728. So now we've paired the, um, the X lookup and the indirect functions in, in such a way that we can jump through tables within Excel, and not just tables, by the way, with, between worksheets as well, you can do this. And the XLOOKUP function will look wherever you've selected in your drop-down list. So that's how you can use this uh, neat uh, trick to use to do your complex data lookups using XLOOKUP and indirect in Excel. Thanks for watching.